Driving along Richmond's number 5 road, you are immediately struck by the multitude of religious institutions sitting literally next door to one another. A Buddhist temple is across the street from a Christian church, and next door to a Sikh temple is a Shia Muslim mosque. More than a dozen places of worship overlook the stretch of road that has come to be called the Highway to Heaven. It is a testament to the diversity of Richmond and an indication of the respect and tolerance inherent of the community. This spirit of respect and acceptance is what welcomed me to the Azraha Islamic Center. You see over here just one salutation, salam alaikum. When we meet other person, we say salam. And in Islam, a salam has a very deep uh, rooted meaning. When you say to salam some greeting, it means that the person is conveying you a message that I am the protector of your life, I am the protector of your wealth, I am protector of your dignity and honor. So now you can imagine that Islam means by itself the peace or the submission, submission to God, peace to the humanity. Twofold meaning of the Islam are like that. I was surprised by the openness and enthusiasm of the mosque. They seemed genuinely interested in participating and went out of their way to make me, a non-Muslim and outsider of the community, to feel welcomed. This location may have been, uh, this was built about four years back. Before that we were in another location, but other people have started coming here in the 1970s. This is the only place uh, in Richmond, is only for uh, worship. So you will not find any business locations on, on, the, on this part of the number five road. You see, now we have to speak English because our children were born here. So all the sermons, everything is in English, except the prayers is in Arabic. Mostly we are here from uh, East Africa, but we originally were all from India. There are people from uh, Iraq, uh, some people from Iran, all over the world. But everybody is invited. Actually, we can classify uh, Islamic faith in two categories. One are the beliefs, and second area is the practice. We have five basic beliefs. First thing, oneness of God, Allah. Second, His justice. Third, the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad, who is the last messenger of God. And before him, there were 120,000 prophets from Adam the first and the Prophet Muhammad the last. And the second last is the Isa al-Islam, which is known as Christianity as Jesus. We have a lot of mentioning in Holy Quran about Jesus, also his mother, Holy Mary, and we do believe the virginity and the chastity of the Holy Mary as well. So we respect all the religion before him, the Moses who brought the Judaism, Prophet Isa, Jesus, the Bible, we believe upon all those books. After Prophet, there are 12 successor of the Prophet, and the 12th one, like uh, as Christians they believe that Jesus, he will make his, uh, return, his return, we believe upon the return of the Mahdi and he will come the same time when Jesus, he would make his return as well. And in that way the unification of the religion would occur, the true religion. The fifth belief is upon the uh, day of the judgment, doomsday. There are six uh, basic things in the practice in Islam. First is the prayer, as I explained, five times a day, 17 units in that. Second is the fasting. And after that, we have uh, two kinds of the uh, financial worship, which is poor rating, alms giving. And the sixth thing, uh, jihad. Jihad means to strive hard with your wicked self, with your carnal desires, to strive hard for that. So, I have, I have been sent by God just to complete and furnish your morals and ethics. A person who is closer to God is one who is the best in morals and ethics. So, Islam teaches us a lot of human rights, a lot of parental rights, a lot of family rights. Once in a lifetime, Muslims embark on a pilgrimage to Mecca, where every year millions of Muslims from different nations and diverse backgrounds converge for the Hajj. This place, home, that is the spot where all the Muslims face when they pray. 
And there are people from all denominations, all cultures, all races, they all sit together. Yeah, we, we have the Shia denomination. Locally, there appears to be a similar brotherhood among Muslim denominations. Universal global environment is hostile nowadays. Uh, on the contrary, the Canadian environment, I found it very tolerant, very friendly, brotherly. We have also very nice coordination with our Sunni denominations and doctrine as well. We visit to their mosques as well. They also come over here sometimes. And our main concern is that in, upon these lands, Canadian lands, we have to be a very nice practicing uh, law abiding Canadian Muslims because Islam doesn't stop you to be a good Canadian citizen. So a good Muslim uh, should be a best Canadian citizen and a good Canadian citizen he can be a good and nice and practicing Muslim. And I believe their priests or their rabbis or their pandits also would be teaching their ministers the same message and as you see we are situated at that uh, road we have temple over there we have church over there we have again temple over there so naturally we have very nice relationship with our neighbors as well and sometimes we invite and also we are being invited in interfaith discussions as well and especially the imams or pandits or the priests of different denominations and in our holy book we have a lot of verses in the holy book one is the second chapter of the holy quran it says that alladheena uh, amanu walladheena hadu wa nasara the people of the faith muslims and the jews and the christians man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir whoever out of them believe upon god and upon the day of the judgment wa amila salihan and they practiced their good deeds their Lord is going to bestow them the reward of their good deeds. So in that regard, when we have this verse, it means that in the eyes of a Muslim, beside the mosques, a temple, a church or a synagogue has the same respect and that honor and the dignity. Yeah, naturally, because due to the demographic percentage in the Richmond, big mass of the Chinese people over here, big mass of the India from Sikh, also a sizable population of the Muslims as well. So Richmond is especially an example that people they are living with tolerance, keeping respect to each other's faith denominations. Devoting one's life to the service of God, it is a Muslim's duty to reach out to the community and spread the true meaning of Islam to be contributing members of society and charitable to those in need. The ambassador, interpreter of Islam, to reach with their neighborhood, with their classrooms, in their workplaces, and just to show with their behavior and with their explanation that Islam is not like that, which you are taking it from the media or from the newspapers. Islam is this. Actually, this is my sixth month over here. I see with respect to the religious point of view, the community in Richmond. It is very rich because I see when I drive all the temples and the synagogues and the churches, their respective days, Sundays, Saturdays and other days, they are filled with their followers. In the end, I would like to recite a prayer or supplication of dua. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Yamma Yusifun Wa Salam Wal Musaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Rabbana Taqabbal Minna Inna Kanta Salli Lalu Allahumma Salli Lalu Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar